Okay, with any luck, this will be the final video for Masks in Dark Table. This is part three of drawn and parametric masks. In this video, we are going to look at exclusive and inverted and inclusive and inverted. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 115 of Understanding Dark Table. With any luck, this is the last leg. The last two modes, exclusive and inverted, and inclusive and inverted, will, as the name suggests, give you the exact opposite of what you got with either the exclusive mode or the inclusive mode. So if, for example, I now wanted to leave the watches in colour and have everything else monochrome, I could simply switch this to inclusive and inverted. And now all of the paths and masks that I've created are selecting the watches. The module is then creating monochrome pixels across the watches, but then the inversion of this combined mask is then inverting all of that so that everything else is monochrome and my fob watches are left in color. Everything would be exactly the same with exclusive and inverted. So let's reset the module once again. We'll go back to what we were doing before. We wanted to pick up just the gold of the watch on the left. Okay, so we start with our hue slider. We have a look at our selection. Make sure we've got all of the pixels that we want. Yep. Now we want to draw a path around the fob watch on the left so that we just get the pixels which adhere to the hue range we've selected and which fall inside the drawn path. Let's suppose we were going to do something like this. Let's suppose we're going to get rid of those bright pixels on the clock face. Obviously, I would need to go in here and modify the mask around the edge of that second watch. Oh, there's another point in there somewhere. Where is it? There it is. Like so. And like so. And so now that we've got just the gold of the watch on the left, we could go to exclusive and inverted, and we've now got the exact opposite and if we come out we would be left with if i hadn't reset the module desaturate so now we've just got the gold of that watch not being affected by the module the mask is actually selecting just the gold pixels but because we've said use exclusive and inverted we are essentially inverting what the module is doing to the image. Guys, you can then start looking at the mask manager and working with the interaction of the drawn elements if you've got multiple drawn elements. Like I said at the outset, this is a massive head trip. But what you can achieve with it is phenomenal. It really is. And... I don't claim to be a master of it. You know, my working with masks needs a lot of work, I know. But hopefully I've demonstrated the concept and you can now take this uh, and go and create some amazing masks on your images. Hopefully this last, what has it been, five, six videos? I'm, I've actually lost track now. But hopefully collectively this has given you the, the mental tool set to say, okay, I now understand how to select just a finite region within my image uh, that I can mask off and then, you know, whether it's a color alteration or maybe it's, you know, some other module, it doesn't really matter. That's the beauty of the way Darktable works. You know, once you understand how these masks can be built, you can build it in any module. It doesn't have to be a, a color adaptation that you're doing. It could be a, a luminosity thing or it could be a saturation thing. You know, 
It's incredibly powerful stuff. Apologies if I sound frustrated by the inconsistencies. I feel like I've I've come to understand a lot more about this in the last couple of weeks of, you know, going through the epic essay that Todd wrote and going through the the manual. I really do wish that the manual could be written in a more user-friendly manner because I on one hand I feel like it's not user friendly you know to the new user who goes and reads that particular page of the manual you're just gonna go what <laughs> but on the other hand I do understand that it is mathematically it's it's intense and and the maths are important to understanding what's going on here but I just wish there was a an easier way to describe it I mean God, you've seen how much trouble I've gone through to try and describe it in terms that make sense to people. And I hope I've done it justice. I really do. And if I haven't, if I've left you more bewildered than you were when you started, then my sincere apologies. I've tried to explain this as best as I can. Some of you wanted to see the new pup. Um, let me go and find the pictures that I took of the pup. Okay, so where is he? Uh, Randy? So here he is. This is him. Uh, he is a purebred Australian Kelpie. Uh, he started life on a farm up in the Northern Territory and he was picked up by the Australian Army and he was going to be part of the Explosive Detection Dog Squad. Wasn't cutting it. So we got him. And uh, yeah, he's a gorgeous pup. He's still got a bit to learn and he's He's been good at the moment. He's, he's asleep on the carpet behind me. He, he's close to 12 months old now. We don't know exactly when he was born. We've just got a rough idea. So this was me setting up for the shoot with Tegan last week. I'd got the backdrop in place. And this was an old curtain. We'd just redone the curtains in our house. And I said to Kath, don't throw those out. I might use those as backdrops and whatever. So, And I'd thrown it on the floor and he just came and sat on it. And I thought, beautiful. I'll grab a, an image of him while I can. It's not great lighting, it was just on-camera flash. Uh, one of these days I will try and set him up and, uh, and actually get a decent shot of him. And, and because he's black, I'd probably use the curtain as the complete backdrop behind him. Uh, it would help him to stand out off the, off the background. But yeah, for those of you who wanted to see him, that's Randy. I hate the name, not my choice. We inherited the name. Uh, we've just had him neutered. So as far as I'm concerned, he's now Andy. Because he's no longer Randy. So, <laughs> so um, but anyway, he's, he's beautiful. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's him. All right, Dark Table 4 is just around the corner. I think that's due out first or second week of July. So that's coming. And because I'm running 3.9, this is close to what you'll be seeing in 4. Uh, there might be some slight changes between now and then but yeah this is pretty close to what you'll be seeing in dark table four uh okay i think that's it i i, I, I do have the feeling there was something else i was going to mention but i can't think what it was so i'm going to leave it there to the best of my knowledge this is the end of the mini series on masks and if you do have questions sing out I can't guarantee that I'll be able to answer them because, like I said, there are some things about it that still just boggle my mind, but it is incredibly powerful stuff. And like I said, you really just need to sit down with a sample of your own images and just spend a couple of hours playing with trying to build a selection mask that meets you know a given criteria whether it's based on hue or whether it's based on saturation or it's a shape you just need to spend time with it and play with the inversion of the individual masks whether it's inverting the drawn element or inverting the various parametric elements all of those things are incredibly powerful when used in combination whether my you know, demonstration with the fob watches sort of met that criteria to demonstrate what you can do. I don't know if it did great. If it didn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but you can get 
incredibly complicated masks out of it. All right, I will leave it there. I hope it helped. Questions, comments, feedback, sing out down below, and I'll catch you in the next one.